I was supposed to have an open house tonight to bring you to. You know, something a little special for the occasion. <laughs> no, it didn't work out, though. It recently sold. Oh, I guess this parking lot's gonna have to do. <laughs> this parking lot is pretty upscale to me. You should see some of the places I've been brought to. <laughs> so, you're in real estate. Yeah, something like that. You said it was 50, right? Yeah, yeah, 50. All right, let me get my wallet out of my coat. It's in the back seat.
you. Why'd you pull over? You know you still owe me from last night, right? I know, but I really need this ride right now. This guy is paying me $600 for the night so I could square shit up with you and pay my rent, which is already a week late. Look, I'm gonna pay you the $200 I owe you plus $100 tonight. I mean, the guy is gonna give me the money as soon as I get there. So, as soon as I get in your car, I will give you the money or you seriously can leave me there. Yeah, I will seriously leave you there. And it's 400 tonight, okay? And Jimmy called, how much are you in it with him? Spotted me uh, an eight ball for tonight, but everything's fine with him. <sighs> All right, this is what I'm offering. Okay, first, you're gonna hook me up with some of that blow. Plus $20 right now for gas. Oak Beach ain't exactly around the fucking corner, and this ain't a fucking Prius you're sitting in. This is a fucking V8 SUV, all right? This baby eats gas when it's turned off. And then when you're done with the job, I want $400, no excuses. Now, I ain't trying to be a dick to you, Princess, but you agreed to arrange this when we started it, so what? You down with this or what? Fine. Can we go now? Look, I don't want to be that guy, but... I don't work for free, and your credit score with me ain't stellar at the moment, so you're not giving me a lot of options here. Thank you. Now I'm feeling a little lethargic right now, and I think a little bump is in order. This will make a pleasant ride to Long Island, what do you say? Can we go now? I mean, I promised this guy I'd be there by midnight, and I really want to make this client very happy. He'd be a great regular for 600 a pop. Alright, let me get my drip on real quick. Don't want to piss off this guy's erection. <laughs> <laughs> So this guy responded to your Craigslist ad, huh? Yeah. Shit. Craigslist is like the new Yellow Pages nowadays. <laughs> you ever worry it could be a sting? You getting busted? No, not really. I mean, it's not illegal to sell my time to somebody. It's only illegal if I fuck the guy for money. So if it seems fishy, just get the hell out of there. Huh. What if the guy's like really fucking ugly? Like an ugly Richard Simmons with a gross body, crazy looking dick, and a lazy eye. <laughs> I'm more worried about the guy I mean tonight being psycho, you know, something fucked up like that. Shit, that's where I come in. Me and Mr. Glock here ain't scared of nobody. I don't know. I thought worst case scenario, I'd get roughed up by some douchebag. But the other night I heard some, uh, you know, somebody talk about an escort going missing again. And after a couple of nights, I started thinking, and I started to assume the worst for the girl. So I started to look up serial killers on the internet and. I discovered that they seem to prey on call girls. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You research about serial killers? Yeah. Why would you do that? I don't know. All right, so you research and... Yeah, it's disturbing. They, these guys seem to prey after prostitutes. I mean, this shit's been happening since the days of Jack the Ripper. Oh, yeah, Jack the Ripper. The original serial killer. Real pioneer in this field, huh? Out here in Long Island, Joel Rickon, he killed like a shitload of, you know, working girls. You know, serial killers need to wear a sign so you know you can just stay away from them. Hey, hook it up. <laughs> ah. Just because you research some shit about serial killers don't mean that there's someone killing girls right now. There could be a serial killer killing blacks or Asians. Yeah, I know it's not likely, but... 
What happened to the escort that just disappeared? Shit, I don't know. Maybe she's done with this game. Maybe she just wanted to leave. Maybe she left with the client, you know. Yeah. The hooker with the heart of gold meets her Prince Charming. <laughs> but in, in this business, there's no happily ever after. Have fun, princess. Right. So, 200 when I get back? 400. Oh, Mark. Just do the job so we can get out of here. I don't feel like sitting here all night. Fine. Get her out of here, man. What the fuck happened, asshole? I don't know. She's crazy. Or on drugs, or both. Look, I can't have this kind of stuff happening here, all right, man? If I wanted some psycho crazy whore to bang, I would have picked one up off the street. Don't touch me! This is madness. Will you get her out of here? I'm a businessman. Scale from zero to ten, zero being not concerned at all, and ten being very concerned. How concerned would you say you are about contracting a sexually transmitted disease? Um, five. Okay, last one. Um, on a scale from zero to ten, zero being never, and ten being always, how often would you say you practice safe sex? Um, five. Are you okay? <laughs> oh, this? Yeah, well, sometimes they get rough. But, but it's not so bad. I, I never really got hurt. Aren't you frightened, though? Well... Crystal? Hi. Oh, you must be Colette. Um, just give me two seconds and, and we'll get started right away. Um, thank you. So much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for meeting me. I promise this won't take long at all. Um, uh, do you want coffee or, or something to eat? Yeah, coffee's fine, thanks. And no need to rush, I'm not in too much of a hurry. Okay. Um, 
wow, your your boss at the agency uh, was right on when she said you were incredibly pretty. It's oh. really sweet, thanks. Um, but first, let's get something straight. The only boss I answer to is me. Candace, the madam, simply provides me a service, a temporary setting where I can conduct my business on an as-needed basis. In exchange, she receives a small sum, which is merely a percentage of my take, so you see, if anything, I'm her boss. In any case, we both benefit, and I'm sure, as you've had the pleasure of knowing, she's a very kind person to deal with, so I continue to work with her. Anyways, what would you like to know? Um, w uh, primarily, I'm concerned with your um, personal experience and knowledge of sexually transmitted diseases. Okay. What age were you when you first became sexually active? Seven. My gosh, I, I, I'm sorry. Um, when did you first become aware of the existence of sexually transmitted diseases? That would have been shortly before I became a woman. Did you learn about them from your parents or in school? Actually, I learned firsthand. I guess you could say I learned from the neighbor, but it was my mother who actually sat me down and explained what was going on down there. Um, I'm sorry, I had no idea. Um, we don't have to do this interview if you don't want. I would totally understand. Of course not. If I let that shit bother me all these years later, what good would that do me, you know? Besides, Maybe it was a blessing in disguise. How do you mean? Well, in a way, he taught me what men were all about. Which very well may have led to my discovery that women, if they were brave enough and could have power over their emotions, could capitalize on the perversions inherent in their male counterparts. You see, I grew up in a very dysfunctional environment. Okay, we never had any money. I was always the kid in the school photos that had clothes that were worn out and torn and who you just knew was sadly neglected. After becoming an escort, I not only had money for the first time in my life, but I had the opportunity to do things that I never would have had the chance to. Everything from furthering my education to flying in an airplane for the first time. So, you know, maybe society says it's wrong and I'm being victimized, but my brothers naturally took a different route. You know where they are? One of them is in prison, one's dead, and the third is working at a convenience store that's owned by a friend of his. He steals bikes and car stereos to supplement his uh, meager earnings. Meanwhile, I'll have my bachelor's degree by the end of the year and may just be retiring from the business altogether. So, I'll save you from asking one question. No. I never regretted it in the least. Huh. But don't get me wrong. It certainly isn't a party every day. It's still a job like any other. But if you saw a way out of a future of poverty and endless limitations in your life, wouldn't you go for it? Even if it were a little risky? It's disgusting. So why don't you clean it for once? What did you say? I gotta go to work, Rick. You don't have to be at work until 5, now go clean it. I have to be there at 4.30, remember? And I have to go by my mom's first, I have to leave in like two minutes. I expect then you'll clean it when you get home from work. At 2 in the morning? <laughs> sure. Hey, come here. I said, come here. Come here, girl, babe. Whatever. <laughs> so have your baby you can clean the bathroom tomorrow morning before school if you want. I'm not crying because of the dirty bathroom, Rick! I'm crying because my mother has cancer, and if I don't pay the insurance, then she's not gonna get treatment. And if she doesn't get treatment, then she's gonna die, Rick. Your mom's gonna be fine, babe. We'll get the insurance paid and we'll beat this thing. Tough as nails. I really don't think the cancer stands a chance against her. I gotta go. 
I'm late again. I'm going to hear it from Tyler, and I am not in the mood for that today. So how about we talk tonight? I get home late, and you leave early in the morning. Okay, so tomorrow night. You get home from school, I'll make dinner. Make it a date night at home. We haven't had one of those in a while. I'm working on my project till like six. Perfect. Hey. Can you please clean up the bathroom sometime soon? It's really gross in there. Sure. Looks like y'all fucking, but that's that's, no, a, no, that's no. a conversation for another day. Listen, she owes me for another eight ball, and I need you to pay me back. For my operation's dead in the water. I can't move anything. Finding her another one? Yeah. I need that bread, man. Wait, 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 wait. You saw her? Yeah. Why didn't you tell me? No, no. This is the other night. She was going out with you, and she was gonna pay me back this morning. But I ain't seen her since. And surprise, surprise, now that bitch ain't picking up her phone. And I don't want to have to come collect from you now. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think it's your responsibility to be picking up her tabs. No, no, no. I ain't trying to pay her tabs, all right? Well, listen, if you talk to her, work for her, whatever. It doesn't matter. Tell her you ain't doing no more fucking services for her. You ain't driving her nowhere. And you sure shit ain't doing no more bodyguard stuff until she comes correct on what she owes you. All right, I, okay, I'm just telling you, I haven't seen her for the past few days, all right? Glass slipper? Hello, is this the lovely, talented, and excruciatingly sexy Elizabeth Stark? Are you crazy? What if it wasn't me that answered the phone? You know I'm not the only one who works here that your girlfriend is friends with? Relax, love. Nobody knows nothing. Listen, when you're done over there. Um, another hour. What's up? What do you say I come by and give you a lift home? Uh, well, thanks, Rick. That's really nice of you, but I only live around the corner from here. <laughs> I thought you knew that. I didn't mean your home. I don't know, but this is kind of crazy. Shh. Pull over your room. It's not right, Tina. These things you're telling me? This is not the man your father would have wanted you to spend your life with. If he was still alive, and you know there was no love lost between us, no matter what shape he was in, he would have strangled that boy by now. I know, Mom. Believe me, there's nothing I want more than to be done with him. Soon. If you're lucky. You know how many abused women are killed before removing themselves from the situation? Mom, he's not physically abusive. Huh. It's just verbal. He's all talk. He just wants to feel in control because he knows I don't want him anymore. He's no good, Tina. I want you away from that slithery snake. I know, Mom. Soon. Look, I just wanted to come by and tell you that I haven't found a provider yet that we can afford, but we're not out of options yet, and I'm gonna do whatever it takes to get you your treatment. Maybe my time on this earth is coming to a close. Mom, don't say that. We're gonna get through this, okay? How? 
How, Tina? How are we gonna come up with this money every month? Short of hitting the lottery? I just don't see how. Maybe this is a sign from God. Maybe he wants me beside him in heaven. I could reunite with your father. Although he probably is in hell, the bastard. Maybe the good Lord puts these obstacles in my path so that I could say my goodbyes. There's nothing worse than dying abruptly, not having made your peace. I could do things I've always wanted to, but Time and a lack of confidence has gotten in my way. God put these obstacles in your path so that you could overcome them. Look, I'll just have to pick up more shifts at work to get the coverage you need. I can't ask you to do that, Tina. You have your own life to lead, and I want you to put aside your own money so you don't wind up in the position that I'm in. Mom, you're not asking me. I'm telling you. Look, I'm going to get the coverage you need, and I'm going to deal with it. And what happens when the chemotherapy makes me sick and I can't go to work? How am I going to cover my rent? You don't make enough money to help me with all of this. Well, we'll figure out a solution for that, too. What is it? It's a rune. A what? A rune. What's a rune? It's like... It's like a letter from an ancient alphabet. And just like our alphabet has many letters, the runic alphabet has just as many. And you can use the runes like tarot cards. You know how some people do the tarot card readings? Well, you can do the same exact thing with runes. What you do is you put them in a bag, and then you blindly pull one out. And the one that you pull out, you look it up in the book of runes. And whatever it says about it is what you need to hear and really focus on. So when my sister did mine, I pulled out this one. Man, was it dead on. So I kept it. How is Michelle? Good, good. I'm glad to say. Um, she has an apartment now and she's working and she's really got her life pulled together. I mean, for a while there, I didn't think she would be able to, you know, come out of it, but she's been clean for almost a year now and yeah, I'm really happy for her. She's turned her life around in so many ways. That's awesome. Where's she working? a cafe up around Columbus Circle. I mean, it's not that great, but they give her health insurance and everything, so. Do your parents help her financially? I mean, how the hell does she pay her rent making cappuccinos and lattes? No. She and my parents, they still don't talk. Um, I don't know. I should ask her. I guess she does a lot of acting and films and stuff with her artist friends or whatever. I don't really know. Yeah, I should ask her. Oh, which reminds me, I need to call her and remind her to bring the rooms tomorrow because we're gonna meet. We're gonna hang out before I go upstate. Hi. Hey, what you doing? Oh, nothing. I'm actually on the train. Oh, really? Where are you going? Just out to meet a friend for dinner. How are you doing? Good. I'm just calling to tell you that I miss you. And I'm really excited to be getting together again tomorrow. I really am. You're really important to me, Michelle. I really want to try to keep a close relationship with you now. Oh, you're really important to me too, Sissy. Oh, hey, can you bring the runes over tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, sure, if you'd like, say. Uh... Oh, listen, Sarah, I'm. I think I'm pulling up to my stop here, and I'm not too familiar with this area, so I'm gonna run now and try to figure out exactly where I'm going, but I will see you tomorrow, okay? Yes, absolutely. I can't wait. Awesome. I'll call you in the morning. You better not leave town without me seeing you first. I have some fun stuff planned for us tomorrow. Love you, Shelly. I love you too, honey. Bye. This is a lovely home you have here. It really looks brand new. You must maintain it really well. <laughs> Thanks. 
You a homeowner? No, I rent a place in the city, a, a little loft that cost me an arm and a leg. Oh, wow. Please, come in. <laughs> I'm Tiffany, by the way. And I'm Ryan, by the way. It's a pleasure to meet you. Um, would you mind if, before we get things going, we take care of the business side of the process? <sighs> Absolutely. It's a great idea. It's always best to take care of the business first, right? You are a cutie, Ryan. I'm so glad you responded to my Craigslist ad. Mm. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. <laughs> I know I am. <laughs> I sure am, too. Hey, does your business bring you out to Long Island a lot, or...? Uh, not too often, but I go where the business is, so I don't mind the trip. Right. How'd you get here today? I, I took the train and then a cab. <laughs> I can't afford to keep a car in the city. Oh. Here. Let me give you a few more dollars for your travel expenses then. Oh, you don't, you don't have to. No. <laughs> really, please, I insist. <laughs> your troubles. I want to make it worth your while to come out all this way. <laughs> Besides, most people find me a little off-putting, so, um... Maybe that extra dollars there will make me easier to deal with, you know? <laughs> I'm sure you're not that bad. Well, you don't know either way, right? You gotta give me some time to show my true self. <laughs> then you can make your judgment. Okay. At the end of our date, I'll tell you what I think. That sounds good. <laughs> hey, on a lighter note, would you like something to drink? I just cracked a bottle of Pinot Noir from Willamette Valley in Oregon. May I offer you some wine? Sure, I would love one. Great. Here, make yourself comfortable in the living room. I'll be right back. Okay. Let's toast to life and the intimate encounters that brighten our days and our nights. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> um, so, Ryan, uh, can I ask you a personal question or would you like to keep personal things off the table during our date? I mean, <laughs> Some of my uh, clients like to jabber on and on about their lives, and others like to keep themselves to themselves. Mm. So, um, which kind of guy are you? I don't mind if you ask me a personal question. Okay. <laughs> um, are you married? <laughs> Why? Would that be a problem? <gasps> oh, no, no. Uh, no, of course not. I, I mean, most of my dates are married, and um, that's your business. <laughs> I'm certainly not passing any judgment. Um, I'm not an angel. I was just wondering because I'm a bit of a snoop and the size of your home seems as if you would have a family, but then there are no paintings or pictures on your fireplace mantle or anything around that I would assume a wife would add to the decor of the place. So I was just curious what your situation is and you are also not wearing a wedding ring. Wow, <laughs> that's quite perceptive of you. <laughs> well, um, I'm recently separated. I'm here trying to sell this house. My ex came by the other day, cleaned out all the personal stuff, you know. So, it's just me here in this house. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, don't worry about it, really. It's for the best. <laughs> Besides Tiffany, I'm getting really excited about what we're going to be doing later. I'm getting restless here. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I mean, we can get into it now if you want, or if uh, you want to go to the bedroom or even the kitchen to mix it up. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want, sweetie. <laughs> One more minute. Can I ask you a personal question first? Or do you want to keep personal off the table? 
No, I, I don't mind. Um, I just have to use the bathroom real quick. Give me two minutes. Sure. Okay. Go right ahead. It's right through there. Sorry, so you were about to ask me a personal question. Well, ask away. Yes. Why are you in the escort business? Well, I got into it through a friend of mine. She was in the business mm -hmm. and was making money and not working really hard. I was busting my ass at the stupid coffee shop. So she hooked me up with one of her clients. I remember I was so nervous that first time. <laughs> I uh, stood at the client's door for about 10 minutes debating whether or not I was going to go through with it. And um, once I knocked, this man, Frank, who answered, was just as shy and nervous as I was. So <laughs> it made me a lot more comfortable. And he turned out to be so sweet and considerate and thankful that my first experience turned out to be great. I enjoyed giving him what he wanted, and it didn't hurt that I was well paid for it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, is it just about the economics, though? I guess for the most part, but I enjoy having these men want me. Mm. Most are grateful after, and that makes me feel good. I also enjoy having sex, and I've never been ashamed of my body. drug that I put in your wine, it slows down the neural activity in your brain and spinal cord until you pass out. You'll be out in just a minute. Don't try to fight, really. Tiffany, if you try to get off this couch again, I'm gonna break both your fucking legs. There's no way out of this. Just let the drug run its course. <laughs> what? Why? <laughs> Why are you doing this? Because I have a need to fulfill. You, of all people, should understand that. Your clients have a need for sex, so they call you. And you answer that call to fulfill your need to put cash in your purse. My need is just as primal as theirs or yours. You, you, <laughs> you don't need to do this. <laughs> yes, Tiffany. Yes, I do. I took that 350 I gave you back. Yes, honey. Where you're going? I don't think they take American currency. Not your head if you want to talk for a bit. 
It's a good choice. I'm take your gag off now. Let me tell you what. When you scream, I'm gonna take that as if you wanna die right now. And I'm gonna kill you. And I'm gonna do it in the most painful way possible. You see, I'm gonna take this knife and I'm gonna gouge your eyeballs out of their sockets. Do you understand? here that you're down here with me right now. There are no accidents in life. Hey, you remember, you remember that first client of yours, Frank? Right? He's such a sweet and considerate man, right? Can you imagine if your first encounter had been with a considerably worse man, right? Then you might not have ended up in the business. <laughs> Your life would have been quite different right now, and you, <laughs> you wouldn't be tied up to this pole in this basement, would you? You know, I think that we're all predestined to do the things that we do. <laughs> Can our destinies have brought us together right here? Yeah, you choose to spare me. <laughs> I, 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 I can re I can repent. I can repent for my sins. <laughs> so now you're gonna plead for your life. What the fuck is so special about your life? Why does everybody gotta plead for their life, huh? Why? What do you love about life so much? Is it that you just don't want to die, or do you really love your life? I, I, I love. Elaborate! What? What are you gonna miss so much about life? I'm gonna miss everything. The bad and the good. I haven't figured out what I want to do with my life. So I'm gonna miss trying to figure that out and see where it takes me. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna miss feeling connected with others and I'm gonna miss. My sister Sarah. <laughs> I'm gonna miss music and movies and the effect a good one can have on you. I'm gonna miss the smell of freshly baked bread and coffee in the morning. <laughs> oh God, I miss coffee. <laughs> But you know what? I fucking doubt it. 
Because if he was, <laughs> he wouldn't have led you here to me. special for tonight. Yeah, I gotta go. I gotta go. Late again? Did we not discuss this the last time you were tardy, which if I recall correctly was the last shift you worked? I'm sorry, Tyler. The subway gets me here at 422 and it's a 10 minute walk if I speed walk. It's only five minutes after 430. 435 is five minutes past the set time which you're supposed to be here working. I just talked to you about this, Tina. Yet? You're still late. Do you not recall having this talk with me before? Yes. So you recall it, you've just decided to ignore it and uh, spit right in my face. I'm sorry if the hours you're paid to work in my restaurant compromises your schedule during the day. I'm sorry if your position here is an inconvenience for you. I'm sorry. It won't happen again. How do you suppose I can trust your word after you've gone back on it? Your promises no longer mean anything to me. I need to see results. My restaurant is a very busy place, Tina. I have people coming in here every day looking for work. Every day. You are a dime a dozen. My goodness, I mean, cut me a little bit of slack here. I do a lot of good work for you in your restaurant. I mean, I have more regulars than any other server you have. My wine and menu knowledge is on par with everyone else, and to be perfectly honest, I'm more efficient at my job than any other server you have. Well, your good work is the only reason I haven't fired you yet. The key word being yet. So, if you don't start getting here on time, you won't be working here anymore. Now get your ass in that restaurant and get to work. And if you're running late again, don't even bother showing your face around here because your position will be filled. Are we clear on that point? Yes. We are crystal clear. Tyler, you can go right ahead and fuck yourself. So I give you a little shit and you're quitting? Is there no spine left in that bony ass of yours? How much money have I put in your pockets? You think someone of your caliber couldn't fill your position? You're a waitress, not a surgeon. You're not special. You will be forgot by the end of tonight's dinner service, you fucking bitch. Good riddance. Thank you. 
fuck are you? I was spent last night at the police station being questioned by Serpical and fucking Dirty Harry. All right, I'm a suspect because of you now. All right, so it's time to reappear, Houdini, okay? Because you're fucking up my business. Look, your parents and the police have been searching for you all over that guy's neighborhood and found nothing. Okay, so do me a fucking favor and give me a fucking call. Yo, baby. What's, What's going up? on, man? <laughs> Yo, doing? it's five o'clock in the afternoon. What the fuck are you doing here already? Oh shit, man. I'm not always working. Plus, we check out a new talent here. Yes. Oh, yes. God damn. Yes. Oh shit. Yo, she new? Nah, she been working a couple nights. Really? Yep. Oh shit. Yeah, she's real nice. Yes. Real sexy. Yo, I'ma hit that real motherfucking quick, yo. <laughs> no. Hell no. What the fuck you talking about, hell no? No, I got dibs. That's all me. What the fuck you know why I have dibs? I got dibs because I'm in here at 5 o'clock watching her dance. Well, you're at home doing God knows what. Hey! Hey, sweetie. What's your name? I'm Diamond. Oh, nice to meet you, Diamond. Name's Mark. Welcome to the club. Thank you. Oh, you are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to do real well here because you are just unbelievably gorgeous. Oh, oh, that is so sweet of you to say, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you really are. Oh, thank you. But I think you're missing the other half of this. <laughs> oh, she's cute. No, I have the other half of my wallet. That half has my number. Maybe you call me up sometime, we can tape it together and get us a bite to eat. What do you say? I will keep that in mind. One of these nights I get hungry enough, I'm off. I'll give you a call. Oh, I think you should, because I'm a real gentleman. And I just want to get to know you better. <laughs> Oh, shit. You're full of shit. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? That's a cute little pickup line yet going there, but I'm still gonna nail it first. Okay, so. well, how are you gonna do that? I'm gonna give her some blow. Oh. I'm gonna hook her in that way. Right, yes. right, right. Well, may the best man bust the nut on her then, right? So what'd you call me for? I need you to come with me to Long Island. Long Island for what? I'm gonna talk to that dude that found Cheryl on the internet. You ride with me, we get Cheryl, and we get our money. You in? How we gonna get there? I'm driving. So? Yeah, I guess so. All right. So if there's anything you need, don't hesitate to ask, all right? I will. Thanks, Jimmy. Absolutely. I'd use that thing if I was you. You'd be glad you did. <laughs> nice meeting you, Mark. I gotta go. What do you mean? We got plenty of time. Three more hours at least. This isn't right, Rick. Come on. Why do you have to do this? We've been having a great time together and now you gotta ruin it by dissecting it? Why bother, really? Why? You've gotta be kidding me. How can you not? I suppose I can stop myself from talking about it, but I just can't stop myself from thinking about it, no matter how I try. And keeping silent is just eating away my insides. Oh, please. I don't believe you. She's my friend. You know, I always told myself I would never do this to a friend because I sure as shit wouldn't want someone sleeping with my boyfriend if I were with someone. And now I'm doing exactly that. To my best friend. <laughs> I can't believe myself. Some attraction I must have to you to act like this. And you're supposed to be in love with her and you care less than I do. See, there's where you're wrong. I cared. More than you know. 
But the fact is, she's leaving me and she's not about to change her mind. So, is that why you're starting something with me? Lining something up for when your relationship falls apart completely, but hanging on to her in the meantime in case she changes her mind? You know, I must really be a fool because somehow, like her, I've fallen victim to your sadistic games and developed some sort of sick addiction. And as Tina tries to quit, I become more and more dependent. <laughs> I'm not doing this anymore, Rick. I'm sorry. You can see me at the club, but I'm sorry. She's my friend. Hello? Hi. Colette? Hi, Tina. How's your project going? Was my interview helpful? Yeah, yeah, it, it was. Um, thank you again uh, for, for being so nice. Uh, I, I just, I was thinking about um, some of the things you said, and I just wanted to reach out and say hey. Oh, thanks. Well, I'm glad you did. So what's on your mind, my friend? Well, um, I'm thinking about working, actually, um, and there's several reasons why I not only want to, but kind of need to. Um, thing is, I just, I don't know, you know, I mean, I, I don't know if God will forgive me for it, you know, I mean, if, if, if I go into something like this for the right reasons, will he let it slide, you know? I just, I, I can't be sure either way. Have you ever heard of the parable of the prodigal son, Luke chapter 15 in the Bible? No, I, I, I'm not familiar with it. A father has two sons. One of the sons asks his father for his share of the farm that they live on. So the father splits up the farm to both the sons. Now one son stays and tends to the farm with the father, while the other son sells his half and takes off. He basically moves around, gets into trouble, spends his inheritance on ungodly pleasures. Eventually he has to find work, which he does, but he's treated poorly by his employer. And then he recalls how his father treated his workers so much better. So he decides to go home and work for his father. He just wants to be a worker on the farm like everyone else. He doesn't want any special treatment. So he goes home, and when he gets there, his father is so happy to see him that he throws him a big party and they have a great feast. Now, the son that stayed home and did the right thing with his life gets angry. He goes to his father and says, why are you having a party for him? He just came home from squandering his money and sinning. I've been here the whole time and have never had a feast thrown for me. To which the father replies, My son, you are always with me. Everything I have is yours. But we must be glad and celebrate because this brother of yours that was lost is now found. Uh, okay, I think I missed the point. <laughs> the father in the story represents God. The story shows us that God forgives. It's as simple as that. So even if you do wrong... He will be there for you waiting with open arms when you repent and come home to him. So if you're worried about God, don't be. He will forgive you. He will be there for you in the end. Huh. That's a really great story. Thank you. Of course. I'm glad I can help. Think you're going to start working? I just might. <laughs> 
So we gotta be getting close to this guy's house. So why don't you go ahead and tell me your plan? I mean, you do have a plan. Like we're not gonna roll up there and just sort of wing it, right? My plan is simple. I'm gonna go to his house and I'm gonna knock on his door and ask if he wants to come out and play with us. Or we're gonna knock on his door. I'm gonna leave some cookie trails that'll lead him back to the truck. What do you think? It's 11 o'clock at night on a weekday. What makes you think he's gonna be awake? What if he doesn't answer the door? I mean, I swear to God, Mark, do you even know this guy's name? No, I didn't get his name when Cheryl was running around the fucking neighborhood screaming that someone was trying to kill her, all right? All I know is that guy's house. And what I'm gonna do, if he's asleep, I'm gonna keep knocking until he fucking gets up. I mean, that's the plan, all right? <sighs> it's just not how I would have done it, but it's your show. No, no, it's your show. It's your show, and I'm gonna let you sort of let this play out because you seem to have it all under control. And what would you do then, Sherlock? Are you sure you want to know? Because I, I don't want to step on your toes or anything. You seem, you seem pretty comfortable with your... Okay, all right, well, <laughs> I mean, I would have come to his house, same spot, on a Sunday, about 5 a.m., done a stakeout, followed him around all day. Maybe he takes me where he really lives. Or maybe he takes me to Cheryl if they're really in cahoots and trying to screw us. That's your plan? Yeah. <laughs> that seems too complicated, man. My way gets us there faster and we'll get the results, all right? Right, okay, well, there's nothing wrong with my plan, okay? Your plan can backfire easily. What if he calls the cops? What if his wife answers the door? Then we got no info and we're worse off than we started. Your plan goes in through the guarded front door. Mine goes in through the back undetected. You like to sneak into the back, huh? Fuck Fag. you, Mark. I don't have to be here, all right? All right, man. All right, cool, 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 cool. Let's just roll with mine, all right? My plan's gonna work just fine. wife answers the door, I'm just gonna say, I'm sorry to disturb you at this hour, man, but we need to speak to your husband about some working matters and we need to speak to him immediately, all right? All right, if shit gets real, I'll give you a signal, okay? What's the signal? I'll just say, Jimmy, come here. I need you, all right? Can we, can we do something a little more subtle where we don't use our names? I feel like that might end up hurting us in the long run. Um, use your hands, all right? Do hand signals. Is that, does that work for you? All right. Okay. Cool. You ready? Yeah, let's, let's go. Do this. have been here a couple times, not to mention the local paper. All right, and so far, I've managed to keep all of it from my wife, okay? Now, I can't blow it now, so you better get the hell out of here before I call the cops. We need to talk. I'll give you my card then. All right, you can call me in the office tomorrow. We can talk then. No, 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 no. We need to talk right now. Did you not hear what I just said? You cannot be here. My, my wife is upstairs. If she wakes up, what would you like me to tell her? Man, I don't give a fuck what you tell her. If you want, I can go up there and tell her myself. You want me to do that? Right. Now I'm going down the marina, about a quarter mile down the road. And I'm going to wait there for 20 minutes. If I don't see you there in 20 minutes, then I'm going to come back here and I'm going to tell your wife about the prostitute that I brought back to your house. Remember her?
Who the hell is this guy? Him? He's my business partner. What's with the hammer? You plan on doing some home improvement? This is for protection, all right? I don't do business this way. There is a time and a place for this issue, and this is neither. Benjamin Harvey. Oh, shit. An anesthesiologist. Look, now you take that number and you, you call my secretary tomorrow and you set up a meeting. That's when we can discuss the incident. So don't come to my house and threaten me again like this, or I will have you arrested for harassment. Now I'm going home. Now turn the fuck around and get back here, or I'm gonna put a bullet in the back of your head. What the fuck are you doing? This is a residential area and a rich one at that. And I'm guessing a gunshot gets the cops called. No, it's cool, man. No one's gonna call the fucking cops. Now, are you gonna roll with this, or you gonna wait in the fucking car? All right, Benny. Looks like you just brought a hammer to a gunfight. So why don't you toss that thing over here and answer all my boys' questions before you get yourself hurt. Let's not do anything that can't be mended, guys, okay? Look, I'll answer whatever questions you have, all right, truthfully. Just put the gun away, all right? We don't need that. Huh. Well, you didn't need to bring your hammer either, but you wanted to be the tough guy, right? Yeah, Benny. You really could have made this a lot easier for both of us. I mean, you could be back home with your trophy wife, who you like to fuck around on with whores. I mean, I really love how rich people like to act so aloof. Like other people's lives don't mean anything. Like you think just because your bank account holds more than mine that you're better than me? You're just a piece of shit. Like so many others. The only difference is you have a summer home. Hey, I don't think that I'm better than you guys. Or anybody else, for that matter. I have as many demons as the next guy. But my wife, she's better than most. All right, she is the best person that I have ever known. All right, but if she finds out what happened, she'll leave me. She'll leave me, and I will have lost the best thing that ever happened to me because I decided I wanted to fuck some prostitute. All right, look, if I acted tough, it's because I can't stand to lose the one person who cares about me more than she cares about herself. Which is fucked up because I certainly don't deserve it. Just ask me whatever you need to ask me before I lose any chance of keeping the woman that I love in my life. Wow. That was really cute. Fuck. <laughs> I'm touched. But let me tell you something. If you fucking lie to us, or you tell the cops about anything about this, I promise you, I will ruin your life. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah, I understand. Good. Now what the fuck happened that night? Why did Cheryl freak out? I, I don't know why she thought someone was trying to kill her. I, look, when she first got there, the first thing she wanted to do was use the bathroom. And when, when she came out, she was wired. She, she, she must have been in there for 15 minutes. I was going to go knock on the door and make sure she was okay when she finally came out. I had some pain pills in there from when I hurt my knee. Uh, the other day I saw that six or seven of them were missing. So I just figured that she went into the bathroom cabinets and took them. When she finally came out of the bathroom, I offered her a drink. She said she wanted a, a scotch on the rocks and she, she slammed it back like a shot. Uh, she asked if she could have another drink and I obliged her. When I brought the other drink over, she was huddled in the corner. She was, looked like she'd seen a ghost. I asked her what was wrong, and she said, she said, please don't kill me. I laughed. I, I mean, I, I thought it was some joke or maybe some sick sex game or something like that. You're not making a fool of me, right? You guys didn't hatch a plan, and, and I take the heat from the fucking cops? You're fucking ridiculous. Ah! Answer the fucking question, Ben. No! I never saw this girl before in my life! And she didn't get a phone call while you were with her? No. I don't know. Seems a little fishy, Ben.
she's gone. No one has ever seen her. I mean, this seems like a rather large coincidence, don't you think? You could almost say it sounds suspicious. Look, I did not threaten that girl in any way, okay? I am not trying to stick it to you in any way. All I know is she was fucked up and she lost her shit, and, and I had nothing to do with it. Ben, you're a smart guy, an anesthesiologist. She was with you one minute, and the next she's gone without a trace. Where did she go? What the fuck happened? I have no idea what happened, okay? All I know is, is she snapped, and then she ran off. All right? Look, guys, I hope you find this girl, all right? I sincerely do. I don't want to be mixed up in the, in the disappearance of a girl any more than you do. But... I don't know anything else about this at all, all right? I have no other information for you. I wish I did. I'm sorry. Yo, you believe him? I actually do. Because Benny here is smart enough to know that if we hear anything that contradicts his story, we're going to be coming back here. And I might even have to slap around Mrs. Benny just for him wasting our time. Everything I've told you guys is the truth. All right. Get out, Benny. Go back home to your wife. If I have any more questions, I come to your office, right? Hey. Don't forget your hammer. I'm really sorry about last night. I went out with the guys after work and completely forgot about our plans, so I'm really sorry. It's okay. I know you're about to leave, but do you want to talk now? I have some time before I go out with a buddy to the Yankee game. I have to get to work. You know how Tyler gets. But have fun. I really will make it up to you. I'll get out of work earlier tomorrow so we can talk. How does that work? I'm working on my project tomorrow night. Can I please go to work? No. I made a fucking mistake, and I'm sorry. I mean, I'm human, it happens. Can you please stop making me feel like shit for it? Can you just get over it? Okay. I'm over it. Why do you have to act like such a bitch? I'm not acting like a bitch! It's fine, okay? Can I please go to work now? I wanna kiss goodbye. Girl, I love you. Next time you have awful makeup that day, night. I don't know what happened, but I've been trying to reach you all day since we had plans. I'm starting to get really worried. It's not like you to stand me up like this. Even when you were on drugs, you paid me the courtesy of keeping me in the loop about changing plans. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, you probably lost your phone or something stupid like that. So, um, will you call back when you can so I don't have to worry about you? I'm on my way back upstate. I'm actually on the train as we speak, so... I guess we won't be able to get together. Um, but still, call me back when you can so I know that you're okay and what happened. I love you.
Hi. Did you call for a date? Yes, I did. But before you come in, we have to get a couple of important things out of the way. Can I expect you to answer my questions truthfully? Sure. Are you currently suffering from any kind of cold or flu, or have you recently gotten over any kind of sickness? No, to both. Okay, good. Second, when you come in, there must not be any touching of any kind. I do not want a hello kiss, handshake, high five, or comforting pat on the back. Can you agree to that? Sure, if that's what you want. Great. Also, can you keep your touching of anything in the hotel room to a minimum? I will tell you where you need to sit and what you need to touch. I will be concise in my descriptions of what you need to do. What I would like if you treated the room like an art museum, and everything in it is priceless art. Well, you wouldn't go into the Louvre and fondle the Mona Lisa, would you? No. Great. So you can agree to that? Yes. Treat the hotel room like it's a museum. Now there is just one last thing. Can you please just squirt a dime-sized amount in the palm of one of your hands? Then spread it around your hands as thoroughly as possible. Then please come in, and you can keep that bottle. It is always good to carry that around with you. Now we can have a bit of fun. I'm sorry to bombard you with such requests, but they are absolutely necessary. It's no problem. So, what should I call you? I'm sorry. Where are my manners? My name is Jude, but you can call me Sex Machine. It's nice to meet you, Sex Machine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. I saw you were a little freaked out already, so I had to break the tension a bit. You can just call me Jude. <laughs> Jude is much better. Um, so, Jude, where should I put my purse? Oh, you can place it on the bedside table, then please have a seat at the end of the bed. <laughs> Crystal, I'm sure you're not as worried as I am about it, but just so you know, this hotel room is immaculate. I had my assistant here this afternoon to quite meticulously disinfect this room, and I trust my assistant completely to be thorough, because I pay her more than a fair price to do exactly that. She understands my aversion to germs more than anyone. I feel comfortable and anxious free in this room, and you should as well. If you're comfortable, so am I. I, I used to be the one who spent hours upon hours ritualistically cleaning every day. Then I started a profitable business and made enough money where I can pay someone to do it for me now. Cleaning used to relieve my anxiety. Now I find other outlets to do so. Like calling women like you. Even a man like me has his sexual needs. I'm able to put away my OCD just enough to fulfill them. Though the way I fulfill them is not with typical intercourse like you are probably used to. That's okay. I can be open-minded. I can tell you have an aversion to germs. Oh yes? What gave it away? Mostly the gloves. <laughs> Were you aware that Saddam Hussein was a germaphobe? He used to order his visitors to strip down and wash their bodies with antibacterial soap before he would allow them to be in his presence. Huh. That's interesting. So I have a lot in common with evil dictators. I'm sorry, I'm getting off topic. <laughs> Let's get down to the reason we are both here. Now that is brand new. The box is still sealed. Would you please open it up and take out the vibrator?
Now just please take the box, place it in the trash can under the nightstand. Now we are both going to pleasure ourselves. Have you ever used a vibrator before? Uh-uh. Do you ever masturbate, Crystal? Yeah, but I usually just use my finger. I think you'll get a kick out of this then. I have heard from other women that a vibrator is extremely pleasurable. More so than just using your fingers. You'll most likely get to the climax quicker than you normally do. Now I also have some lubricant for you to put on it. Here, I got you your own bottle. Would you please unfold the towel and sit on top of it so you won't soil the sheets? Before we get started, can we just settle up with payment? I would just, I would feel more comfortable. I mean, I know <laughs> you're probably a really trustworthy guy and I'm sure you wouldn't stiff oh, of me, course. but. Thank you. You're welcome, Crystal. Are you aware how beautiful you are? No. Why don't you tell me? You are the most beautiful escort I have ever had the pleasure of seeing. And I've seen quite a few. Actually, <laughs> you're my first client. <laughs> so I guess you're kind of popping my cherry, so to speak. Wow, I'm honored. I do hope you enjoy this experience and that my phobias do not make you so uncomfortable I drive you out of the business. I know my methods are a little unorthodox due to my mysophobia, but we are both going to get off. And I have a large tip for you if all goes well, which I am sure it will. I'm sure I will have a wonderful time. I know you will. So let's get down to it. Will you please stand up and pull up your dress? Now please turn around and bend over. You have an unbelievable ass. Now, while remaining bent over, slide off your panties. Amazing. Now, would you please lie down on the towel and get the vibrator ready for insertion? Please place the vibrator in that beautiful pussy of yours. Turn on the vibrator and slide it slowly in and out of your pussy while using your other hand to rub your clit. Do that until you come all over that beautiful vibrator. Feel free to get dressed now, Crystal. Did you like using that vibrator? Yeah, it felt really good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I enjoyed watching you enjoy it. That was exactly what I wanted from you. Thank you. No. 
Thank you. You really are beautiful, Crystal. I'm happy I was able to pop your escort cherry. <laughs> this is a business where you can make a lot of money. You certainly have the looks. Thank you. Um, do you want me to take this towel with me? Oh, no, you can just cram it into the trash can. You can take the vibrator and lube with you, though. Those are presents from me to you. Thank you. It was a pleasure, Crystal. I hope to see you again soon. You will. Can I ask you one more thing before you go? Sure. Can you give me a little kiss on the cheek? Good night, Jude. Good night, Crystal. My God, Michelle, what happened to you? You know, I started getting really worried about you. I hardly slept this entire night. I started thinking really terrible things. Are you okay? What happened to you? Michelle? Are you all right? Are you jogging? Michelle? Hello? Are you all right? No! How can I help you, miss? I need to file a missing persons report or something. I think my sister is missing and is in terrible danger. Sorry to hear that. When was the last time you saw your sister? Um, about two weeks ago. But I spoke on the phone with her two days ago and she told me she was on the train on the way to dinner with someone, but she didn't tell me who and she didn't tell me where. And then I got this really strange phone call okay. from someone. I'm gonna have a detective come out and speak with you. Just hang tight one minute. It's definitely out of character. I'm sure we can help you. What is your name again, miss? My name is Sarah Coleman. And my sister is Michelle Coleman. Can you write down her cell phone number, please? Sure. I can trace the last call made on this phone pretty easily. We can even get a location where that was made, again, fairly easily. Technology is pretty good that way. It's quickly becoming its own app. What I can do is trace this call, find out the exact location when that call was made. And if that location has any kind of surveillance equipment, such as from a traffic post or a local business. We can acquire the video from those cameras and pull a still image. And hopefully, we'll be able to see exactly who it was that made this call. Okay, how long do you think they'll take? Well, like I said, the trace is easy enough. But to find an image from that location, that may take some time. For now, why don't you start filling out this missing persons report? Just fill it out to the best of your ability. Okay. And I'll get to work.
And I dropped off a check with the landlord, so the rent is all taken care of. Hey, how's that jerk boyfriend of yours? Well, we haven't really been talking much lately. I'm really busy with work and school, and he's really busy with whatever it is that he does, so... The relationship is basically over, just neither of us have said anything yet. Well, that is good news. Congratulations on losing that dead weight. Now the only dead weight you have is me. Mom, don't say that. I like helping you. Gives me a good reason to work hard. Hello there. You must be Crystal. That's me. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Listen, I just got back from the store. I was picking up some snacks for us. But I forgot the wine. <laughs> um, you mind taking a trip with me up to the liquor store? It's right up the block. We'll grab a bottle. I'll let you choose the vintage. What do you say? Sounds good. All right, cool. Let's go. Lady? I think you're going to be able to slip out of those. No. Not the first girl I've tied to this chair. <laughs> no. I've actually... Quite the Don't you say? hesitate to kill you. Do you understand? <laughs> Nod your head if you understand. anybody do anything. Hmm? And why are you a whore? You don't know me. You don't know anything about me. I know that you sell your body for me. What else do I have to know? <laughs> you know what? 
There is nothing that you can say to me right now that's going to change the way I feel about you. You were about to have sex with me for a few hundred dollars. Which I took back, by the way. Because you ain't going to be needing that money when you're gone. No, you don't need to do this. I'll take this as a sign that I shouldn't be going down this path anymore and I'll move on. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't do that. You see, you've already seen me for what I really am. I can't take the risk that you're not going to point the cops in my direction. So, unfortunately, you're going to have to die so that I can carry on with my good work. Can I pray first? Sure. Never mind, you can go ahead and pray. But I want it out loud. And you can calm yourself down a little bit here. Because I want you to enunciate your prayer. guidance to help my sick mother. You gave me this outlet to make money and I thought I've only used it for good. I've been paying her medical bills and her rent and making sure she's doing well. Lord, please give her the strength to take on this cancer without me. Please help her financially get through this tough time without me. I, I would also appreciate if you looked after Rick and you helped guide him in the right direction. I, I wish only the best for him and I know that you can help him down a straighter path. <laughs> the last thing I need from you is forgiveness. I'm so sorry that I've gone down this path, but I've only done it with noble intentions. I know that you are forgiving. Colette told me the parable of the prodigal son, and I know that you let people back into your good graces. I only hope that you will let me into the kingdom of heaven with you. Please. That's, that's what I need from you now. Forgiveness. Amen. You hear that right? A parable of the prodigal son. That's the one where the father has his two sons, right? And the one son does him wrong, but then comes back home and your father greets him with open arms? Yeah. Yeah. And you did all this for your mother. Yeah. Fuck! <laughs> He did it again, like some sick joke, but I think it's real. We were able to get a number of images based on our investigation. Unfortunately, they're both in pretty busy areas of Manhattan. One in Times Square and one right outside Penn Station. Now, of course, there's always cameras running in those locations, but we only got a couple of images. And? And unfortunately, in each one, it shows no less than 800 people. And by my estimation, about half of them are walking around with cell phones next to their ears. Hi, can I speak with Tina Everett? I'm sorry, who? Tina Everett, she's a waitress there. No, I'm sorry, there's nobody here by that name. You sure? She's worked there for over a year. She's waited on me while I've had dinner there. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe, but not in the last couple of weeks. That's how long I've been working here, and I know all the employees. I called her at work yesterday. She hasn't been there in two weeks, yet she washes and irons her uniform every night before she leaves. Fucking bitch.
Here. Advanced Concepts in Sociology, Professor Mark Lester, Tuesdays and Fridays, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. She's in class right now. You gonna go over there? No. You are. Excuse me? Yeah. Do you know who Professor Lester is? Professor Lester? Oh yeah, he's right over there. Thank you. Sure. Professor Lester? Yes? Sorry to bother you. My name's Liz, and I'm a friend of Tina Everett. Oh, yeah. She wasn't in class today. Did she send you to come by to find out what she missed? No, uh, I'm afraid she didn't. Tina's been, well, missing for a couple of nights. I, I was just wondering if you knew where she might be or something. Has Tina spoken to you regarding what she's been doing in my class at all? Well, this secret project she's been working on, she's been studying, I guess, the lifestyles of prostitutes or whatever. Studying? I... Fucking practicing, Liz. Look at this shit. We need to call the police. One step ahead of you. Called while you were over at the university. They said Tina's mom was there filling out a missing persons report as we spoke. Well, the card. Where's the card? Don't bother. They didn't even know Tina. You asked for Tina? Yeah. What about the name on the other card? Uh, what was it? Crystal. A gruesome discovery on Long Island this morning. The search for missing New Jersey yeah. resident and online escort Cheryl Graham, who disappeared in Long Island several months ago following a paid date with a client, led to the discovery of several bodies in an area off Gilgo Beach. While it appears as though searchers have uncovered the dumping ground of a serial killer, authorities are yet to identify it as such and have made few statements to the public other than that they have reason to believe that of the bodies discovered so far, none appears to be that of the missing New Jersey escort. fucking shell in the fucking ditch that wasn't related to any of the girls in the beach I mean it's a fucking coincidence she they said she just died from fucking exhaustion fuck you found Tina huh Too bad. Just wish they didn't put any mail on us. Should have told them no mail. You're doing all right. You smoke? Ah, shit. Don't even have a cigarette, do you? smokes. You don't go anywhere, okay?
you saved me. You really saved my life. <laughs> more bodies, as thus far they have found at least 10 sets of human remains. Out of the several bodies discovered, all of the identified victims have been known to have engaged in online escorting. In unrelated news, a woman was struck by a vehicle yesterday after running into heavy traffic. It is unknown why the woman ran into traffic, but authorities say they are not holding the driver responsible for the occurrence. The woman was in critical condition when she was rushed to a Queens hospital where she succumbed to her injuries this morning, not having ever regained consciousness.